As Steve said, I'm Rahul. I work for Instagram. Uh, our team mainly works on Instagram client interfaces. So the focus of our team is making sure that Instagram as an app is looking as clean, as neat, uh, as beautiful as it's today, even after maybe after a year or two years when we start scaling and having more and more users and more and more developers on the team. So my team is primarily focusing on visual consistency. So today my talk is going to be primarily focusing on visual consistency. Why I believe or why we at Instagram believe that Instagram, uh, for any app, a visual consistency plays a key role in increasing the usability of the app and stuff. Uh, so before I begin, uh, I just want to ask you guys, how many of you guys here have worked with Teams styling in Android? Cool, quite a few of them. So for most of you who have worked with this, um, this talk might be a bit of relearning most of the things. Uh, because this topic being a broader topic, I have tried to go into the basics and bring an understanding into visual consistency part of it. So let's, let's get started. So the agenda for today is going to be like, what is visual consistency? And why do you need a visual consistency in the app? And how do we achieve it? So coming to what is visual consistency. So the visual consistency is nothing but you making sure that all the UI elements in your app are consistent across. Uh, that being said, a typography. Uh, so you divide your typography in the app in such a way it's consistent. So let's, let's take a small example. You have a list view uh, in Android. So you have a header for your list views, and then you have list item for each row. So assume that you have created a consistent typography across your app. So saying that the headers are going to be bold, and the items are going to be having a normal font type. So now this is basically you're making user in your app understand by the time he, 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 uses, he or she uses your app, they come to an understanding that whenever they see a normal font weight, that means that the item can be clickable. Whereas if you are using a bold font weight, those items are not clickable. So this means that you are basically inputting in the user's brain saying that, hey, this is what you can expect in our app. So you might be thinking, hey, I mean, like doing these kind of changes might be are really impactful? Um, yes, uh, I'll have more answers for you guys in the coming slides. So for, for us, I mean, like what we thought was when the user starts using our app, we should feel like there is only a single person who had designed it. We don't want the app to look like, okay, this page was designed by one person, the second page was designed by other person and stuff like that. Because if you do those kind of stuff, what happens is there is this inconsistency in the UI and the user tends to forget what he was doing and he will basically navigate away from your app. So why, why we need it? I guess I have spoken a bit about it. Uh, so first thing is you basically need to make sure that the user stays in your app and he understands your app. So you bring in a new functionality, you add in a new functionality. The user should be able to learn that functionality himself or herself. Uh, without needing any, sorry, without needing any coach marks and stuff like that. Because the more you try to train the user, the more harder it is for the user to understand what your app does. So that's one of the primary reasons why you need to be consistent in your UI. You need to be consistent with your uh, content, what you store, show and stuff like that. And at the same time, you need to basically establish a logical structure in your app. So for example, you grow from screen A to screen B, and the user expects you to come back to screen A, because that's how the Android natively works when you hit a back button and stuff like that. But if instead of that, you take them to a screen D, which they have not seen it before. I mean, from a business perspective, that might make sense uh, for some logics. But at the end of the day, for a user's perspective, it really doesn't make sense to me, because I've never gone to that screen, and I don't know why I'm going to that screen when I hit a back button. Because all the apps are doing one thing, and your app is doing differently. So, that's, again, one of the important things where you need to make sure that you establish this logical structure. And the most important thing for us as engineers is technical debt. Um, there are many of us who, stri who struggle to reduce the technical debt and who struggle to convince our PMs, our uh, managers uh, in the teams to say that, hey, we have technical debt and we have to solve it. But we, we never get a chance because we are all trying to build out good products. 
uh, which we want to ship every, uh, as quickly as possible. So we don't really get a chance to do that. Using and consistent design patterns uh, basically helps you remove that too. So here is an example. Uh, the top, on the top left corner, you see there are two things which we call it as tooltips. So as you can see in the one on the left, the text, the drawable boundaries are different from the one on the right. So we ran an experiment. Uh, we ran an experiment and we started testing it to see how the user feels. We did a UX research uh, team was sent and they started seeing. So the tendency was whenever the, the users were really confused, what's the difference between these two? The end goal was basically to educate the user using a tooltip saying that, hey, you can click that and you can perform an action. But in this case, on the left, the user is thinking that, okay, I need to hit the button and I can understand. But here, the tooltip started to look differently and their brains didn't function automatically. They had to do some manual work in understanding and doing those things. So it was kind of difficult for the user to basically do those things by default. So I can give you one more example. So back in July of last year, uh, Instagram redesigned their whole buttons. So we changed all the colors of the buttons uh, from white to blue, except for the contact button. And we ran an experiment. Our followers went up. That was great. Uh, then what we did was, for the second round, we changed the color of the contact button to blue too. So now all the buttons are having blue color inside the app. And we saw an increase of 21.2% of our contacts being clicked. So that's like, in, in terms of Instagram scale, that's like a lot of number of users who are starting to connect to the businesses directly. So that's again an example of where if you try to do an, with standardized components or a standardized designs across your app, it will basically benefit you in a long run, uh, making sure that your app is consistent and stuff. So how do we achieve it? Uh, we talked about visual consistency. We talked about what are the advantages and stuff. So how do you achieve it? There, there are three main things uh, which, we, which we are doing internally in our uh, applications. We are using the three main frameworks of Android. Uh, one is the attributes, styles, and themes. We are using these uh, to establish this hierarchy inside the code base where it's more reused across the product teams uh, and they can start basically inheriting these properties rather than trying to rebuild their own components. Sorry. So, uh, sorry about that. Attributes. So uh, I, I don't know if you, many of you have heard about this, but there was something before attributes which was called as attribute list. Uh, this was deprecated in Android way back in API level one itself. So the main difference between the newer version of attributes versus the attribute list is that there is no namespace. So namespace is nothing but what we define in our XMLs, uh, XMLs uh, colon schema, and we define an, uh, a URL where you can basically reference all those attributes from. So this basically helps you get those attributes and access those attributes. This is nothing but an interface with the list of all the XML attributes uh, which we define. And, the, uh, and they basically allow you uh, access in three ways. One is either by the index or you can have a prefixed way or you can use the namespace way. So the order of attributes is basically not uh, something which we care about. I mean, Android doesn't care in which way you write the attributes, but a normal coding uh, perspective or a good standard perspective, you basically define all your layout attributes at the top and define all the non-layout attributes. So like the height, the, width, the ID is followed by the height and width, and then something with Android gravity or something like that. And along with this, uh, you can also create custom attributes. So the custom attributes can also help you uh, in defining so many other things. So let's say that you have created a custom view. Uh, let's say you have created a circle. Uh, and now for the circle, you basically want to give properties via XML. So for this perspective, what you do is you create your attributes via the XML, from the attribute set, and then apply those attributes from your XML perspective. So the way we do it is we declare something called as, I have an example. Okay. So the way we do it is here I have created an stylable by the name of custom view, and it has two attributes. One is the, I'm checking if it's a Roboto, uh, font is Roboto, and the next thing is I'm thinking if I want to put a something in a text, which is an highlight text. That's nothing but the string is the format for that. So now I can basically read from these attributes, whatever you have written in your XML, from the Java perspective, and start applying them in the background. 
So what, I, what is the advantage here I see is, now as a developer, I might be not be interested. So for example, you have done your API and there was someone else who is using your API. For him, if, we start, if everyone starts doing that, like, okay, for this, atria, for this custom view X, I need to apply blue. For this custom view Y, I need to apply red. They all start doing this in Java. Your code is gonna be a lot of if else conditions all across. Uh, and it's, it's going to be hard to read, it's not going to be something which you can maintain, which won't be scalable in a longer run, or else what you can do is you can say that, okay, I'm going to limit you with only blue color. I can't let you give you, I, I can't let you have any other color if you use this component. Then, then you basically run into a situation where the developer is not really happy because he, he's not getting what he wants, and he starts redo, redoing the same component, by just changing the color. So that's, again, duplication of code and technical debt which we run into. So rather than that, uh, you basically create this uh, kind of an attributes and you define it in the ads.xml and then you can basically put them and, uh, yep. So in your custom view, as you can see <coughs> in my uh, init function, I basically am reading from the typed array attributes and after I read from the typed array attributes, I'm just storing them in a local variable because I'm not applying there any, uh, anywhere else. So I can give them, it's more like a key value pair. So you can give them a default value uh, in most of the cases. Something like text, you, do, you can't uh, give it a default value, but for integers and stuff, uh, booleans, and you can, you can definitely give a uh, default value. So you basically read those values, uh, whatever is being inflated from the XML, you read those values, and once you read those values, you basically recycle your typed attributes. So this is how you define uh, in your XML. I guess I should have shown this first. So this is how you define in your XML. So you have your linear layout parent, and then there is a custom view, and you are defining your two attributes. Uh, and as you can see, I have created a custom namespace, uh, which is a must if you are creating custom attributes. You need to have a custom na namespace, which basically tells that, hey, this attribute is available in my APK, not something from the Android's one. So I created those. I created those two attributes. I have define those values for them, and now I read, I read those values from, the, from my Java perspective. That's one way of doing the custom attribute. But if you look at the other way of doing this is, uh, you always have to declare a stylable name that is nothing but the class name. So you're saying that these attributes are belonging to the class X or class Y and stuff like that. There is also another way which is by not declaring any stylable elements, you just declare the attribute name and you can access this attribute name from anywhere in your code and start applying uh, the colors which you need and stuff like that. So there are different formats uh, of attributes uh, which you can have. You can have float, you can have boolean, you can have integers, you can have strings, uh, you can have uh, colors, you can have dimensions. So there are different uh, kinds of things uh, you, can, you can do. And the adv other advantage of this is basically you can retrieve these attributes uh, even during runtime. So that's more of an advantage which you can do, uh, which you can have. Cool. Uh, next, coming to styles. Uh, styles is nothing but a collection of attributes. Uh, so for, uh, if you have 10 different attributes and you put them into a set, uh, that basically becomes a collection. These basically help you in like modifying how your API looks or UI looks and how your app visually looks and stuff like that. And styles can be declared uh, either for a view or for an entire activity or for an application itself. So there are different levels of styling which you can do and stuff like that. The name of the style is, uh, should be a string, uh, which would be basically used as a resource ID. And styles follow the concept of inheritance. Uh, they have two types of parenting. They have an implicit parenting and an explicit parenting. Uh, styles also contain like items. Each of these items cont uh, May, uh, attribute to the attributes, we, uh, contribute to the attributes which we talked about earlier. So uh, different types of parenting, and uh, so here I have an example of an implicit parenting and an explicit parenting. So there, uh, there is this dot convention in styles in Android which we can use uh, to basically pay, name something. So what happens here is my parent style here is app style, and when I say the next style which I define app style dot custom view. Now what Android does is it inherits the properties from the app style and also adds the additional properties which I have written in my, in my custom, view, uh, custom view style. So basically there is an inheritance concept which happens here. And the, other, uh, and the other part of the parenting is explicit parenting. So in an explicit parent you 
define the parent uh, heavily, where you say, okay, parent is equal to app style, you define it clearly. So the advantage here is, if you change something on the app style, you basically will have a reflection on it. But you can't do the other way around. You can't have a custom view dot app style and also parent app style because that, that's not a possibility. Uh, because you can't have an implicit parenting with another style and an explicit parenting with another style. That, that, that's not a possibility which you can have. Themes. So a, themes are nothing but a collection of styles. Uh, which are applied to an activity or an application uh, and stuff like that. So themes are basically you define themes, uh, they are nothing but styles itself, uh, but you call them themes based on uh, the properties uh, which they are inheriting from. There are different types of themes in Android, I mean like there is a dark action bar, there is a light action bar, uh, there are many, uh, many types of themes which you can run into. So the one thing example which I have taken here again is changing the theme from an activity to activity uh, because time and again we want uh, the theme of an activity A be different from activity B. So there are these uh, situations where you have different themes and different uh, properties which you want to set. So what I have done is I have taken an example of themes. I have created a couple of themes here uh, and I will show you guys how, I mean, uh, I will show you how in manifest you basically can put them in. So from a themes, from an example perspective, I have two activities uh, here. I have a uh, main activity, I have a login welcome activity. Uh, so from the main activity, I basically am adding a no action bar theme. Uh, from an, another activity, I'm basically adding an activity welcome theme. So here basically themes give me an opportunity to move away from a traditional, uh, traditional frameworks of an if else logics and stuff like that. The other advantage here which I see is if, because now you can, using these styles, using these attributes, you can start building UI models or UI uh, instances. So what you can do is you can create a property of attributes and you can bundle them inside a certain theme and you can have maybe 10 or 12 or any n number of themes inside your application. And any other developers who are working on that can just start inheriting those themes. So what happens now is it's basically a single point control and tomorrow if somebody comes and tells me, hey, I want to change uh, the color on the button uh, X and I can have it with a single line change rather than, have, rather than coding the color of the button in each and every XML file, I'm basically bundling, bundling them into a centerpiece of things. So where you mainly have, uh, you mainly make a one change and you're all done. You, you'll have a new coloration and everything at, at that point. Uh, so, so I mean like uh, the, other, the other things which we have is you basically have to uh, create a structural style sheet uh, and in terms of creation of a structural style sheet you have, uh, you can use composition uh, whenever you have a custom views which you want to create. Uh, you can basically also have uh, a lot of standards in your app uh, so other uh, developers can basically follow it as I have said earlier uh, and as uh, Domo mentioned earlier we do have a lot of lint. Uh, and info, especially with Facebook and uh, Instagram uh, uh, architecture and frameworks. We have a lot of linter warnings which we throw. Uh, some of those linter warnings would be uh, something like we see someone st creating a custom view uh, and we throw a linter warning saying that, hey, we already have this custom view which, is, which can be helpful for you. Why don't you just reuse the same thing rather than recreating it? So we, we, do, we tend to do a lot of those stuff. And uh, we, we tend to build a lot of reusable components uh, and we try to set up a lot of clear documentation uh, for, for most of the things which we do and stuff like that. Uh, one thing which I have learned uh, with, my menu, uh, with my experience, especially with Instagram doing all this, is these things will, will, show, will, feel, will make us feel like, hey, these are smaller parts of the app. Uh, how, how is the usability or how big the impact is going to be? Uh, but from whatever the tests which we have run uh, so far, we are seeing a huge improvements inside the usability of our application, especially with these minor changes. Uh, because from a user's perspective, you need to basically educate the user in such a way that they are their own uh, masters or own teachers of our app. They should be able to teach someone else inside their app and you can basically look at a color or you can look at a text and start assuming things, how they feel and how they are uh, going to be. So that's, that's mainly the perspective of this. And I think. 
Yeah. Uh, so the one one more thing, I guess I will run. I just want. I want to I want to emphasize on this one action bar color. Uh, there are already these kind of attributes which are available in Android uh, frameworks itself, which you can uh, emphasize on a lot of action bar colors and stuff like that. But uh, making sure that you have these custom attributes inside your own application will give you more access and more control uh, towards the application's API, where you can start doing the things the way you want. And uh, it gives you more freedom as an engineer uh, and also as a designer. If you're a designer, you basically have more access and more control over things, and some of these attributes can also be con controlled over the air as I said by runtime. You can send in some values from, uh, from the server and you can do a lot of A-B testing also if it's needed. Uh, so this, this makes much more uh, easier uh, in terms of how you wanna code. Yeah, that's all I have.